old and I'm 30, and you are asking me for ID. Get out of here. Hi, I'm John, and I'm hiding behind a mountain of washing that I need to sort out. And I'm John, and I'm going to disable a cat. And I'm not John, and this is Would John Rather, a podcast where I ask two people called John questions, and they answer, would they or would they rather not? Actually, that's not what you do at all, is it? I ask, would you rather, Uh, and you pick a side. We pick a side and then talk about something else. And then you make your decision on nothing that we say. I'm surprised you remember, because it's been a long time since I've asked, because you've both been taking your revenge on uh, me by not letting me win, even though I've clearly won every question since. But Matt, do you, do you want to know why you won last week's episode? Go on. John said, and I quote, Matt's very ranty. I don't know if I could deal with him not asking the questions. But... I'm always very ranty. I think last week you were particularly ranty. Hmm. I think our listeners should let us know were you particularly ranty or not. I think our listeners should just let us know anything. I think the listeners should shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a listener. I, I'm I think some of our listeners should be uh, silent More background horrible. participants and make it easier for me to fucking edit. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so it was a bit aggressive um but no i i'm i'm happy to be back in the question seat i've got so many questions I've, i have recently had a 12 hour drive i thought of many questions i've done a 12 hour drive so i didn't get a chance to write them down so i remember some of them and one of the things that i mean last week is an example to go by john asked a simple question about chess and monarchy and religion and we we went we started talking about things that you wouldn't listen to with your family like i think we've gone a bit low brow with some of our conversations recently so i think we should up the ante a bit would you not agree definitely i'm definitely. all for highbrow discussion highbrow discussion are you in agreement? highbrow with... discussions no not eyebrow discussions highbrow discussions oh right, right yeah um, I wanted to go lowest common denominator and talk about fart jokes all day. <laughs> well, you're in luck. Would you rather wee or poo yourself? Oh. Poo. I'm, I'm glad you chose that because I'd much rather wee myself because if you wee yourself, it can be dry in a couple of hours. If you poo yourself, you just you just poo yourself. So that that will also be dry in a couple of hours. It's also it's not, not going to go anywhere. Neither that's the... why that's why you can fish it out and just throw it. And then when anyone goes, oh, there's a bit of smell there. You go, yeah, block drains. And everyone goes, oh, okay, fair, fair enough. Well, if you wee yourself, you're going to have wet pants, you know, wet trousers. Depending on how how you're arranged, it could go in down into your sock, go into your shoe, and um, your shoe's uh, not going to smell the same again. The, the same could be true of if you poo yourself, depending on what type of poo it was. I'm going for best case scenario. You, you've, you've had a lot of shreddies. Like roses. Had a lot of shreddies for breakfast. Just dig it in, throw it out, job done. Do you know what? I've had a scowl on my face ever since you asked this question. Okay, but that doesn't help you win. No. I've worked with uh, some some interesting people, and uh, what one of the stories I was told um, is there was a couple of guys met a person they'd not not worked with for a good long while, and uh, they they all got drinking even more and. Uh, Another person who they didn't particularly like turned up. And they went, ah, should we give them a group hug? So the two guys get up, give the, this fourth person a group hug. And the third person just shouted, map of Africa, boys, map of Africa. And the two guys who were giving the hug to this fourth person they weren't too friends with knew exactly what to do. They just let rip, piss themselves, and the map of Africa was plain to see on their trousers. And the person in the grip couldn't escape, and they got urinated on. 
I mean, what? you 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 could you could poo on someone if you really wanted to. Um, it, it might have to be a bit more creative. It would be, but just because I know he's uncomfortable, I need to hear more from, more from John. I think the benefits of weaning on yourself is that you could go to the men's, find the hot air dispenser. And smell like hot piss all day. And dry yourself off. Evaporate it. Whereas, I'd much rather do that than just smell of shit. Okay, okay. Here's a question. When's the last time either of you did either of these things? I can edit out the silence, it's fine. <laughs> I, think, I think genuinely the last time I pissed myself was when I was pissing in a bush and one of our friends shoved me in the back. So when I had my, my wang out, it pushed my arm with my wang into my shorts. And then, you know, where, where does it go? Oh, oh, it goes into my shorts. Oh, never mind. Right, pull it back out. Continue finishing my wee. And that was that was the last time I'd, I'd, I'd wet myself. That's, that's probably seven, eight years ago, maybe. Any advance on seven years? I genuinely have no idea. I consciously haven't wet myself in as long as I can remember, but I have pooed myself three times that I can remember. And we think none the less of you. I know, but it happens. I was on a bender. I thought it was not a poo, and it was. And Did you dig it out and rally? I, I went to the bathroom, I tidied up, and then I carried on my evening. Jobs are good then. Exactly. I actually uh, pulled one of those nights as well. Got a girl's number, and we went on a date a few days later. And this was afterwards, not during. So, so you weren't making eye contact as you were straining one out? I didn't strain one out. It was always an accident. I'm just saying, these things happen. There's, n- there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's, it's an accident. We're all people. I don't understand why some Johns have an issue with talking about it. I think, to be honest, his silence is that when I asked the question, he, he genuinely uh, did actually shit himself and <laughs> he's not here anymore. If he did, I'd go... just piss myself laughing. I had to go clean myself up. It wasn't it wasn't good. Have we got any more arguments? Because I'm not really hearing much of a conversation piece about this. No. Well... I'm going to go with I'd rather shit myself. Because <laughs> you, you, you've been there, done that. Been there, to, been uh, there, use the t-shirt. done that, got the t-shirt, used it to wipe it up, threw the t-shirt away and we <clears> bought <throat> it online. Um, but also because, well, the urine soaks in and the smell is going to linger. Whereas at least with the alternate, you can like... Dispose of the evidence. Dispose of the evidence. You can always, like, wipe it out, clean yourself up, throw away the underwear, just go commando, and then then it's all good. <laughs> not, that, not that I did that when I did it. I just cleaned myself up, and there's a good, good pair of underwear. I just need to wash. I'll just carry on drinking. I'm just saying. Um, so, yeah. I'd rather, and have... Not that I ever had to make the conscious choice, or I'm going to do one of them now, which one would I rather do? But I'd rather poo myself. Good for you. John wins. Yay! Tweet at me, follow me, to hear more about my poo escapades. At would Jay rather. Uh, And... You could you could let me know about all of your bathroom related accidents in your therapy session. Wait, just to confirm, are you their therapist in this? Uh, or I just, don't know, maybe just, I'll just be there, just hidden in the, in the air duct. He's that person that's out to get them. 
Yeah. Okay. I don't have the I don't have the qualifications to be a therapist. You can't deal with other people talking about how they soil themselves. No, I just judge them and tell them to get out of my therapy room. See, yeah, I thought we John my... Robert was a safe space. <laughs> yeah, so there was, no, there was no judgment here. There's, There's only no judgment, judgment here. here. There's only judgment here. And if you want to pass on a message for me to pass on to John about judgment and shame, I am John the Driver. Shame. Shame. No H's because uh, they are shameful. There's uh, there's, a, there's a harsh H in there, and we don't do that with uh, with John rather. No shame, no shame. So do you, do you want to keep on the hygiene trail, or should we move to something completely different? Something different. Something different. Oh. Um. Okay. Would you rather never remember anyone else's name? Or people never remember your name? I'd much rather never be able to remember other people's names, because that's already the life I live. <laughs> is that what you call me, not John? It's one is, of the reasons. the sole reason you're on this podcast? Because you can remember your own name, you remember my name. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I already have that problem. I don't really remember people. It, I mean, obviously I know some people's names. But they're a few select group, and it's actually not that big a problem. You just don't say people's names. You just say, hey, how are you doing? Or... Or what? Or, yeah. Or, <laughs> or yeah, I mean, that's basically all I've got. But <laughs> <laughs> just just different ways of saying, hi, how are you? I used to work with a guy who referred to every customer as chief, as a sign of respect. I always find it very strange. Are you one of those people? Have have you just got this this one go-to name you call people? I I have a habit where I call well I call anybody lovely, but for men I always call them sir or chef. But that's just because I'm the industry at work in. But I call I call men generally sir. Just because I'm used to doing it with guests when I'm dealing with them, so I just go, "You're right, sir. Well, how are we doing, sir?" So, but I think it's a it's a, it's a polite way of greeting people. So I like being greeted with "sir." Oh, suit you, sir. Oh, sir. You've gone full pelt as a tranny, sir. Oh. Oh. Do you? I, it doesn't bother me. I'm I'm not the most memorable of people. If people can't remember my name, I'm I'm all right with that. My uh, my coveralls at work, I actually got my name written on them, not just on the inside, but on the outside, because when everyone's dressed up in blue border suits, we all apparently look the same. So, and is that if, like tiny little J O N on the chest or giant across the stomach J O N? Um, it's actually my full name. Um, it makes me look really middle class and horrible, Jonathan. Mm. Mm. Um, that's uh, across my right chest above my pocket no names are supposed to go above the less breast no left sorry yes yeah, left yeah, so okay. i was imagining it if it was looking at myself yeah so it's on, on my left left breast just just for random information that none of listeners need to know but i took umbrage with it's above your left because most people are right-handed so when you go to shake hand your eyes are directed to the name Ah, very clever. Every day's a school day. Exactly. No one's to shake my hands, they're always oily. I just think that I've gone through life knowing that I've got a limited capacity to know things and learn things. And if I take it up with frivolous things like people's names, then there's less space for interesting pieces (laughs) of knowledge like that. Like the being right-handed and spotting somebody's name tag. I mean, that's just, just, that's just, a great piece of of trivia that just, I will now commit to knowing. Whereas mm. I could have avoided that space with somebody's stupid name. Just to confirm, you've not got kids yet, have you? 
Oh, crap. I mean, you've already deleted my name, so... You're going to have to pick something. And that, John, you're going to have to pick John something. Second. Oh, no, I meant... Oh, crap, I girl. forgot them. They're at home. I've left them. Left them at the supermarket. <laughs> when did you have kids and you didn't tell us? I forgot. Oh. Because he doesn't know their names, so therefore he forgot to mention them. Or he did know their names, tried to remember his shopping list, and forgot them while he was remembering his shopping list. See? Finite finite amount of mental capacity. Like a hard See, drive. I, I don't struggle from that. I, I can tell you members of the Steelers 1977 Super Bowl winning team. No no one's ever going to call me out on that, so I'll just carry yeah, on. Yeah, but, but, um, but, but you could have forgotten something else because of that. Yeah, you've decided what's, that that's a useful piece of information that you want to know. Like, what's your wife's horoscope? <laughs> horoscope? Do you mean, like, star sign? One of them. The thing that doesn't actually affect day-to-day -day life, but will probably mean something to the person you love. She's a Virgo and you're the dragon. Okay. I mean, that was Chinese and nonsense. Well done. Pick, pick your poison. <laughs> you're, you are a good husband. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. You're the first person that's ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and there we go, folks. The saddest thing you'll ever hear on a podcast. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so... um. I, I, I don't mind if people can't remember my name. It means I get to introduce myself. I, I quite like introductions. And um, it, it doesn't bother me if I can't remember someone else's name because they'll forget mine. So they'll introduce, after to introduce myself, they'll have to introduce myself to me. It's fine. I think the only way it would be terrible is if I've got to do that every single day at work. What, the same as you introduce yourself every week on the podcast and you have to go, Hi, I'm John. And there's a really uninteresting this, fact about myself. There's a really uninteresting fact. And also, it's not spelled with an H because they're haunted because <laughs> a possum stole them. Because there's no H's in GameCube and it's my favourite console and I can't betray it. Like, that would get that would get tiring. No, it's tiring as you think because it's a, it's, a it's a new and interesting challenge every week. And sometimes it does sound like I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel, and uh, sometimes it's uh, it's probably a call for tending to my wife. Uh, she has she has returned, and uh, the blood wasn't hers. Well, Thank goodness. I I think you're a valuable husband, and I don't think that she was scraping the bottom of the barrel. I think, in fishing terms, you were big enough to keep for food, not big enough to take a picture with but not small enough to throw back thanks I think <laughs> <laughs> also what fish would I be a lot of people's names tench. aren't that interesting you'd be a tench sorry a lot of people's sorry, names jo are... sorry John you'd be a tench <laughs> you may continue I was just going to say a lot of people's names aren't that interesting so Coming up with some alternative that they don't mind is perhaps more interesting. I'm going to call myself Frank and introduce myself to uh, to uni girls and see where that leads. I mean, to marriage. Yeah, to to marriage. Maybe I'll find in, a grateful in, one. In your case, it would probably lead to divorce if you're going to go and introduce yourself to uni girls as Frank. Uh, I'm Mormon, so well, no, I'm not. No, you're I'm not. Gonna... <laughs> Frank's Mormon. He's game for it. <laughs> I mean, I think she will attest to this, but I'm probably more likely to call my wife wife than by her actual name. I know she's there, so let's let's hear. Let's Is that true? Test. Hold hold on. S say that again. Just shout wife. Wife. Is it true that I call you wife more often than I call you by your actual name? It is true. We went to the climbing wall recently. Instead of trying to find me and go curse it, he just went, Why? <laughs> and, I, and I knew where he was from that. Thanks. It's a nice little insight into our 
into our love life. And also, the, the, also your wife climbs a wall to escape from you. <laughs> just, just, just to clarify for, for anyone that cares and that's listening, John counts this as date night, and this is the treat for the wife. So that gives you even more of an insight into their marriage. It's like, yeah, we're going to have date night. Shh, we're recording. <laughs> so we can keep an eye on her so she doesn't escape I've just thought of one last little thing I can think of like if people couldn't remember my name they could come up with a good nickname for me so I, I've always lacked a good nickname in in all of my adult life the closest they came was we were doing French and we got taught jambon which is French for ham I was quite a meaty teenager I played rugby and I was quite good at it and uh, I was known as Jambon for about 18 months. That's the closest to an actual nickname I've ever had. French for meat. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I've completely forgotten what question I asked. Would you people remember your name or forget your name? No, that wasn't it. No, would you rather you can remember other people's name? Or they can remember yours, and That's you one. you would remember you would rather remember other people's name than they forgot yours. Wait, who picked what? Wait, no, yeah. leave it leave it a mystery because I don't know the question, I don't know the answer, but I would rather people forgot my name. Is that so? When you gave them terrible customer service, they could never get it back to you. Well, there's a very good reason, so you've already argued your case. Did I announce you as the winner? Because I don't know who won from my response. John won. Oh, yes. good. Yeah, that's that's a good reason, but also because it's... I always feel super awkward and guilty when I forget someone's name, and it's normally about four seconds after they've told me it. Um, in my line of work, I learn a lot of names, and I don't really care for them the people wore the names to be honest but i just think it's less awkward i don't really care if people remember my name it doesn't matter to me it's it's a prerequisite it's just a noise people make to get my attention which as a father you'll appreciate has now been changed to dad and other john you'll know what it's like to be called dad because you'll hear it slowly getting fainter and fainter if you leave Sainsbury's or Tesco's because um, you left them behind no okay. <laughs> oh he said he did that was me yeah <laughs> sorry I thought you were talking to the other John I forgot I had kids <laughs> <laughs> anyway so John wins yay so is that one all now no no was there a first question yeah uh, oh, yeah, I, I, I claim that I'd rather poo myself. Yes. I remember. Oh, okay. So you've already won, but we'll play for charity anyway. Uh, this, this question is a good question, I think, just for discussion. Would you rather, just, just to confirm, you're familiar with the format of the show by now, right? Do you know what? It's going to, yeah, the format of the show. It's going to be terrible when people forget our names because they won't remember be able to remember the name of the podcast would but there Trent we go. rather no no it's would George rather I don't remember which letter goes in the parentheses I don't, it's hard enough to find us as it is anyway J I think it's Joel would, would Joel rather <laughs> uh, would you rather have the Midas touch or a silver tongue Ooh. go on lad I'll let you pick you're in the bank foot I think I'd rather have a silver tongue because, well, because <laughs> I didn't think this decision through. No, because well, I was I was thinking that if I had a, my initial thoughts were well, I want the minus touch because I still want to be able to taste my food, but then I thought, well, if I have the minus touch, then everything that I touch turns to gold which means I won't be able to taste it anyway because it will be made of gold so there'll be no point in tasting my food so I may as well have a tongue that doesn't function as a tongue 
and not kill everyone I love by turning them into gold. This may be controversial, but Sean, I love you as my friend. By proxy, I love your wife. I'm not going to touch her. Well, Just I hope not. That because, you know, I'm not going to turn into gold. So I'm not going to turn everyone I love into gold. Well, if you shake their hand, but you've already hug them. You've already, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay, do continue. What about if I wore gloves and wore a t-shirt and then a jumper and then layered up and then I could give people hugs and my skin wouldn't touch theirs and I wouldn't turn them to gold, but I'd have some sort of crazy MC Hammer golden tracksuit on. Yeah, from my understanding, the Midas touch was like your fingertips. I just wear a set of gauntlets. I can high five everyone. Well, don't matter if they're gloves or gauntlets, they'll be gauntlets after you put them on. Nice. There is a really good Malefice song about the Midas touch, but I'm not going to sing it to you because I don't want to embarrass us. And also, you don't have the range. (laughs) All that. And what, what, just, just paraphrase, what do they say about the minus tu- Midas Touch? Uh, what, what do they say about it? Yeah, they wrote a song about it. Can't remember, I need to think it over in my head. Oh, God. I don't think, I don't think, I don't, I don't think it was, I don't think it was anything good. I think it was just talking about a man who was, Lonely and everything, everything he that went wrong, he'd brought on in himself. So it was more he touched things and they turned to dust than they turned to gold. Well, isn't that the original story of the Midas? King King Midas says that he wants everything he touched to turn to gold, and then he's granted that wish, and then he, he goes around to go touching for a wee and stuff. then oh no. He goes around touching loads of stuff and is really happy. And then I think his daughter comes running to like give him a hug and, and he gives kills her, her a hug and he turns her to gold as well. Yeah, so it was bad. But the bad he he was on himself. It's because he wasn't careful. Well, it didn't come down to his own carefulness. It came down to other people. Well, I'm going to wear a gauntlet. It's going to be made of gold because I'll touch it, and then I'll just go about my normal life. And then when I decide to uh, to I, I need some more funds, I'll uh, just find something that's that's pretty big, and then I'll turn it to gold, and then cash it in, cash for gold. I'll put it in a jiffy bag. Job done. I'll be set for life. And then when it's eventually time when you're like in your 80s, and you're like, you know, I've had a good life. It's time to go. Just go and like mount yourself on top of some wall in the centre of town, and just touch yourself. And just turn into a statue made of gold that is just stuck there. And if I didn't touch myself inappropriately, I'd be out there forever. But it'd be too late after you touch yourself because you'd be turned to gold. Let's hear more about this silver tongue, anyway. Uh, so I'm assuming this is a literal silver tongue. I never said that. Well, if it's not a literal silver tongue, then I'd still get to taste things, and that would be great. Uh, it would also, if I had the metaphorical silver tongue, it would also make me better at responding to the questions on this podcast, <laughs> which uh, would benefit me at least once a week. You know, being a more eloquent speaker, being more persuasive... That's that can only benefit me in this context. But then I'd fill a jiffy bag full of God and I'd send it to you and you'd declare me the winner. <laughs> Your silver tongue doesn't doth have no charm over my golden touch. Or he could just use his silver tongue to get you to send him gold in the post anyway. No, I'm not sending him gold, I'm gonna send you gold so you would declare me the winner. Yeah, but he could also use his silver tongue to persuade you to send him gold and to persuade me to announce him the winner. 
Also, in I feel like a, that persuasive charm, Nate, is the kind of thing that makes people successful in their careers, and that sort of gets them gold in a not in a literal sense, but in a it makes them rich sense. So. I think it'd be useful in that respect as well, in terms of earning money and building a supply of gold. So it's actually just as useful as the Midas Touch, but without the killing side of things. Uh, But if I had to have a literal silver tongue, then, uh, you know, at least if things got really bad, I could just sell it for scrap and in the pawn shop and be able to buy one last meal that I wouldn't be able to taste. Dream big, John, dream big. <laughs> one last meal that I couldn't taste. Fuck me. Uh, Out of the kindness of my heart, I would take your silver sun, I'd touch it and then make it gold for you, because you get a, a better price for it, uh, cash for gold. Because I'm, I'm just that nice. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> and then maybe we could use that money to buy your real tongue and you'd be a real boy. So, John, would you just wear, like, these gloves all the time? Do you not think you'd ever be tempted to take them off? i take them off when I'm going to go around turning stuff to gold. But it's it's the burden I shall bear, and I shall bear it with pride and honour. But how how do you find this information out? Uh, well, I really hope I wasn't picking my nose at the time. Um, That'd be amazing. Gold bogeys. Blow your nose in a loop. <laughs> Looks like a jeweler's floor. <laughs> I think, it, yeah, it would, it would depend when you got this power. Or were you born with it? Or maybe it's Maybelline? I don't know. Because then you might accidentally do something you'd regret and you'd You'd learn to control it. You'd be like Rogue from X-Men. You'd learn to control it, but it'd be too late at that point. You've already done the damage. The damage is done, so I guess I'll be leaving. I thought we were going to... T- I was going to say I listened to Golden Touch by Razorlight one too many times. No, I don't like Razorlight. I don't like Johnny Burrell. I turn him into gold. I mean, yeah, the, you also become a superhero who could just stop anyone you wanted pretty sure it's I mean that wouldn't even be murder would it that would be manslaughter surely mm, no because you'd have intent yeah no it would be murder premeditated murder actually so I just wouldn't high five any criminals job done I don't make a habit of doing that anyway unless you were hired by the police Batman style to come and sort out the hard and the worst of them. <laughs> Reggie Cray, give me five. Oh, <laughs> bad times. I think the and best thing. Ab- sell him. I think the best thing about having a silver tongue would be able to just when things are going badly, you can just go. Well, everything has a silver lining, and then stick out your tongue. You're you're very no. I'm I'm calling it because you're very. <laughs> Set in your ways of it being a literal silver tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I've talked about the benefits of a metaphorical silver tongue yeah, as well. Yeah, but when prompted, and I, th- I thought it was fairly obvious with the question that it wasn't. And I genuinely thought when I wrote down this question, I was like, surely they'll get that a silver tongue isn't a silver tongue. It's a metaphorical question because surely there's a lot more benefits to being able to touch things and they turn into gold even though there's a curse that comes with that, then there is to just having a very heavy tongue made of metal. <laughs> and you went, oh, no, I've literally got a tongue made of metal. Like, you didn't even get into the whole conversation of the fact that it would be difficult to fucking talk when the whole point of having a silver tongue is you're really good at talking. So, no, whitewash, John wins, Midas touch. <laughs> you should have won. I was so, so ready for the silver tongue to win because there's so many more benefits to it. But as I stick <laughs> of arguing your case for you, you lose. You lose everything this week. 
everything. You lose, sir. Oh. You, you quite finished bullying, bullying the lad. <laughs> Don't you start, or you can lose as well. Not John, <laughs> not John wins. <laughs> can I do that? No. No, it just surprised me because he's an intelligent chap and he he, he went with the uh, the very definition of a silver tongue. It was surprising. It was it was lack of ambition, but not. He didn't think out of the box, and the box was there. I'd opened the box. I don't know. <laughs> All I know is I'm not going to touch anyone's box. Please don't touch our box. But. Yeah, well, whitewash this week. John wins. John's going to be asking. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you then. Thank you very much. Um, I'm John. I've got the golden touch. See you next week. I've been John, and they're taking pity on me. And I've been not John, and this has been with John, rather. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> sorry, Chief. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's really sad, John, because I've just done the math, and that means you just lost five out of six questions. <laughs> it's okay. We'll blame it on your learning disability. <laughs> <laughs>